All right, so right off the bat, I just want to say that I'm disappointed that my like talks on security unit testing just don't get this many people, right? <laughs> that's probably more important, so we're just going to switch it up and that's what we're going to talk about instead. Okay, now, okay, all right, all right, we'll talk about the hacker tracker. Um, so right off the bat, I'm Seth Law, I'm an application security consultant, I've done development in the past, uh, I actually started my career at iOmega, anybody here remember the zip drive? Yeah? yeah? Okay, I was not responsible for the click of death. That was not me. Blame the, the hardware engineers, right? If you lost data, that was not my fault. That dates me. I've been around for a long time. I've been coming to DEF CON since DEF CON 8 or something like that. Um, but now I just do application security work. I'm an independent consultant. So that's me. I do the iOS version. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Whitney really quick. I'm short. How does this work? <laughs> Um, hi everyone, I'm Whitney Champion, short stack. Um, I've been doing the Android version of Hacker Tracker since 2012. Um, so um, I'm a systems engineer out of South Carolina. Android is a hobby for me, that's why this guy is here now. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming. <laughs> hey guys, uh, I'm Chris, uh, also known as Advice Dog. Um, I met Whitney at DEF CON 24. And started talking to her about uh, Hacker Tracker because I liked using it, but I was like, I, I feel like it could be better, right? Um, and it was open source, so I was really excited. I'm like, oh, I can totally commit to this, you know, I can change things. Um, and I started talking to her, and she was totally cool with me changing things. So I joined the team, started working things, and I took over Def, uh, the, the Android version for uh, Hacker Tracker it, for 25 and 26, so the current version, yeah. Uh, I've done a ton of rewrites. Pretty much, it's a. Whenever I'm bored, I guess I just look at Hacker Dragon. I'm like, how could it be better? Um, so any performance you enjoy, yeah. I spent way too much time on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that that is a running theme. As we spend too much time on it, I've got my family here. They know, like, the last <laughs> couple of weeks, especially every spare moment of my time has been, all right, can I get this in so I can get it into the App Store so we can actually get it into the iOS version. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is where it came from. I joined the Hacker Tracker team, or the iOS version was. Uh, started in about 2014 I think it was. Something like, that. Something like that, right? So it was a couple years after Whitney did the first one, so we'll let her talk about what she came up with and then we'll move on to, you know, when iOS came and, you know, how we've done things. Alright, so what happened was... <laughs> what had happened was, um, so I wasn't able to go to DEF CON in 2012. Um, I've been coming since 2009. I was really bummed that I couldn't be there that year. So I wanted to give back in some way. I still wanted to contribute. Um, I was pregnant and couldn't leave. So I spent probably two months pretty much pouring my heart into the, what was the first version of Android, which is what you see here, which is don't knock the awesome Photoshop skills. I know it's just mind blowing, but that if if you came the first uh, first version was like 2012, 2013. That is what it looked like, and it's just beautiful. Um, so that was the first four years, and as Seth said, he joined a couple years later and did the iOS version. The iOS version. You'll notice that that you know that all the all the margins are off and things like that. We had a lot to learn about actually how to put this together. Um, again, you know, awesome Photoshop skills. As you can see nowadays, we've got actual designers that work with this a little bit. Uh, we'll get into that um, a bit later. But you know, the first iOS version. I think the version that made it through the the App Store that most of the attendees downloaded actually crashed for the first two days of the conference. Right? It was not necessarily, in my case, a successful effort. I remember being pretty disappointed that I couldn't push through the version that I wanted people to have. Um, and that's, traditionally that's what happens to us is we, we have these ideas, Chris pushes something, we talk about it, we put it into the app and then whether or not it actually makes it out <laughs> to you is another story. Um, that being said, we've had a lot of great feedback so we'll step into some of that here in a, here in a minute. Um, now it's official, right? This, is, this makes us happy. Uh, DEF CON actually brought us on board, when was that? Uh, 20... It was right after you joined. Yeah, so it was what, 2015, 2016? Yeah. yeah. 2016, I think it was, was the first year that Hacker Tracker was the official app of DEF CON. Um, and now, uh, actually, Chris and I this year are members of the Info Booth team. Uh, so we are related to the guys that you're seeing sitting around in the booths telling you about maps and other things. We're working with them closely. Uh, Mellows helped us out 
uh, immensely to actually get events and get them into the application, um, but we are the official application for DEF CON. Obviously that's why we're here, that's why they promote it at each of those info booths. It's so that you have this information at the palm of your hands. I mean part of the reason that I wanted to do it initially was the fact that I, I had the booklet and it just wasn't tenable. I had my phone with me as well and I got involved because I wanted to be able to track all these different events and actually do something. I saw that Whitney had the Android version and thought, yeah, we can do that on iOS as well. Pain points. Now there are a lot of pain points. Um, first off is scheduling. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah, so scheduling for the first like three, well actually until this year when, this year. so Seth will uh, get into his part of this after I talk about how difficult hand jamming thousands of lines of JSON was for the first several years. Um, it was mind numbing. <laughs> the other part was all the villages, all the um, like contests, all the events, all the talks, everything was in a different format so there was no like easy way to go scrape every website. There was no easy way to get all the data. It was very much a manual process. So I don't know how many hundreds of hours we spent staring at these files but my god I'm glad that those days are over. Um, especially this year there's what like 28 villages something like that and every single one has a different format so hopefully that will ease up um, going forward. So if, yeah if you've, if you've never handwritten JSON files and made sure that the modified date has changed at 2 a.m. you just haven't experienced joy right? That's right. It, it's really easy to do and really easy to mess up and then the application crashes. Or if you're dealing with the iOS, you know, JSON parser and happen to have an errant, you know, uh, new line character inside of a string, you want to know what happens to iOS? Yeah, it <laughs> crashes, right? So there's all of these pain points that we have dealt with with the schedule. Uh, now the, the next one is, you know, don't trust the hackers. Um, the first well, I mean, as soon as I got involved, we started advertising out on Twitter, hey, guess what, we've got this app that we built for DEF CON. How many people do you think actually downloaded the app that first year? Guesses? Five? <laughs> There's some trusting people. There's more trusting people out there than that, but our, our biggest response on Twitter was exactly this. No, no, no. There, there's no way I'm downloading that. Yeah. Right? You know, you, you guys are shady. It doesn't matter that the source code was all out there. They were like, who are you nerds putting out this app, especially for the Android version, because you know that that's just kind of a free for all. But they were like, there's root kits. Don't do it. There's, they're going to take your data. They're going to steal your pictures. Don't install any of it. So. And so the answer is yes, we have all your data. So right. Just, let's just get that out of the way. We'll move on. You yeah. weren't supposed to say that. No, sorry. Sorry. Ugh. Uh, okay, the other thing is bug fixes at all hours. Um, how many people here are actually like uh, uh, iOS developers that push things into the App Store? We got a couple of you. Seven. I feel your pain. Um, how easy is it to actually push bug fixes into the App Store quickly? Easy? No. It's very difficult, right? Um, and we'll get into this in a little bit. But, you know, this was realistically our lives over especially the month before DEF CON, right, is yeah. the bug fixes and when it actually has to happen. See, I had the luxury of being able to blast anything to production at 3 o'clock in the morning after six shots and who knows what's going to happen. So <laughs> that was that was a toss up between Android and Apple for us. Yeah. yeah. Seth had a little more uh, validation on his end. I did. And it's, it's about finding time. I mean, obviously we're, we've got normal jobs, right, I guess kind of normal jobs, normal jobs. Um, and so actually finding the time to put this together, it's not necessarily something that, you know, just happens in one afternoon as much as we would like to think we're great developers. There's always bugs, there's always things that, uh, This that doesn't happen in the afternoon. No, it just doesn't happen in the afternoon. It happens at 3 a.m. Right. when you push directly to master. That's when it happens. Yes. After the kids go to sleep. Yeah. All right. Waiting on redacted. Anybody seen, like, uh, the, the mobile operating system in the iOS version? Yes. Why, why do you think that is? Okay, this is the app review process. Okay, we get random people that are looking at the application. And I've marked the app as explicit, but you want to know what, uh, <clears throat> all right, so, so it's okay for in the app for us to say damn and hell and shit and everything else, but you know what I can't say? Jailbreak. Just, I can't say that. That's not okay. 
Um, so last year, especially, this became a huge issue. I've had, I, I, I've had, I just got rejected, you know, three days ago again on the latest version that I want you guys to have in your hand for iOS, and it's because it says hack. And it says, uh, you know, there's other things that are in there that whoever it is that's in the app review process that's looking at the application actually thinks is, hey, you're promoting hacking. There's like the whole Apple terms of service and I, like we're, we're doing our best is realistically what it is and we're coming up with ways to actually get around this. So the redacted in there that you're seeing is because we, yeah, we've just learned that if we do that, if we take out the term watch OS or we take out the term Mac OS that they accept it. Uh, but if we don't, and it happens to be in somebody's talk, then they won't, right? So I feel really bad for the, the speakers whose, whose title of their talk is jailbreaking Mac OS or something like that because it's, you know, uh, redacting redacted OS, right? And sorry, that's all, we, that's all I can do. I, I'm, I'm, we're doing our best. Okay. Okay, so last year we did a, we did a big overhaul, um, and even this year you'll notice it's a lot different than those images that we put up there first. Um, I'll let uh, Chris talk to the Android version first. Uh, sure, so DEF CON 25 was the first version that I came onto it, so I did a ton of different changes and all that stuff. So pretty much from the ground up I rebuilt the app probably multiple times over the year just because I got a lot of free time, um, but like, a lot of the focus is just trying to figure out exactly how we can make a like a hacker conference good in terms of schedule because we don't really know there's like guidelines I guess out there of like what we could do and what we can't do but we're trying to figure out exactly what kind of information you need and like what you want and everything like that so we're also trying to do a lot of stuff just like everything from the ground up rebuild it and make it impressive you know from like and like I've rebuilt it multiple times, also for DEFCON 26. Um, like for la example, for last year, uh, Hacker Tracker on Android was about 19 megabytes. This year, it's about 4.2. Uh, it is insanely small. It should be the fastest, smallest app on your phone, hopefully. Uh, and that's pretty much what I've been doing is just trying to make the best app for you guys. You know, because I found if if I hate it, then you're probably gonna hate it. You know, if it bugs me, it might bug you, but it'll probably bug you eventually. Yeah, so the whole idea is that we want it to bug you, right? Like I, I even just saw a bug pop up on my phone on the reminders for iOS that's, yeah. Um, but last year we did a pretty extensive overhaul of iOS as well. Um, we've got the animations that are in there. If you've seen like the little jitter as it starts up, you know, that's us stealing, I mean that's us just animating the initial screen that you're on, right? There's, it's not sending data anywhere, right? Um, but along those lines, we've upgraded, right? We don't, we don't support iOS 9 anymore. I, like, I may try and push a version out there, especially for those of you that have burner phones that have decided that, that we're all going to hack you because you're here. Um, yeah, so uh, we may support that in the, in the future. Uh, I'll do some downgrades to make sure that we can actually support some of those older versions of iOS. Uh, but that is kind of a forward-looking thing. When I tried to compile it initially, I got a whole bunch of error messages for iOS 9, and so I scrapped it, right? There's only so much time in the day. Um, the other thing that we did last year was the UI redesign. We actually engaged with a graphic designer, um, Chris Mays, who may be here in the room somewhere. Chris, are you here? All right. I don't see him. Chris uh, actually uh, worked for a company last year, and their graphic designer was willing to chip in um, and help us actually do some of the UI design. So a lot of the elements that make it look a little bit more polished came from her. Uh, that was Megan. She's listed in the iOS app. Um, and it, it, it has made things more streamlined. It's made it easier to actually use and navigate. Uh, the one thing that we did away with this year was the uh, tab bar down at the bottom for iOS. We moved to the menu so that we're trying to get more of a unified look and feel. Uh, the other thing is we do support multiple conferences. Has anybody here used Hacker Tracker at a different conference? No. Oh, we had a couple. Okay. Yeah, they're nowhere near as big as DEF CON. DEF CON is definitely our primary conference, uh, but we support uh, ShmooCon, TourCon, we did HackWest, we did a, a couple B sides events during the year. So if you would like to use Hacker Tracker at other conferences, just hit us up on Twitter. It's not difficult. We've structured the app so we can load different conferences there and make it easier to use and, and a community resource. The whole idea is the code's out there, it can be reused. These other conferences could compile it, but we've got the ability to actually switch and use it within the same interface. Okay? 
All right, so high points. So I think one of the most fun parts of the last few years um, that we've had is hiding Easter eggs in the app. So um, uh, several people have come to me to hide things for different contests, um, specifically the DC Darknet Challenge. That's been one of my favorites because we've done that probably three, maybe three years now. Um, we, one year I hid a password in the app and a bunch of you came to me to get the most ridiculously dumb unicorn sticker and I don't know why any of you took the time to come find it because it's horrible, but there it is. Um, <laughs> Seth uh, went to the trouble of making stickers and hiding things in the iOS version as well. So it's it's been a lot of fun to like engage everybody and just try to do whatever we can to get other contests and events of all involved. This has been especially interesting. Um, we've gotten good attendee feedback, we've gotten bad attendee feedback, and we've gotten weird attendee feedback. But the good attendee feedback has been, by and large, the best. Um, especially since Chris joined and, and put in a lot of work, um, I don't have nearly as much time anymore to, to contribute. So he's done a huge, uh, it's been a huge effort on his part um, to make it as awesome as possible for you guys on his end, and, and so is Seth. So the reviews that you guys have given us are just amazing, and especially like the ideas you've come back with, like feature requests, bug fixes, bug reports, like all that stuff has been amazing. So just like keep sending that because it helps us and it helps us make it better. Yeah. Just one thing, okay? If you if you review us four stars and say some schedule items are wrong, just hit us <laughs> on Twitter, please. Don't yes. don't ruin our rating. We're, we're trying, you know, hit us up on Twitter. We'll fix Scheduling it immediately. Scheduling is hard. The, the app <laughs> rate it eventually. Because all the negative feedback, I get an email, I read it, I get depressed. It's not great. Think about my feelings first. Don't make Chris cry. Don't make Chris cry. <laughs> this is probably my favorite email I've gotten so far. Um, there have been a lot of worse ones, but this is definitely the, the best. My email's been hacked. When I reply to certain people that tells me it came back unreadable with crazy text covering up my info. But bottom line, the last part is the best. If it does, will it report the hacker to the police? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it will not. I never heard back from this guy. Um, I also did not respond. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, I thought about it, but he says, I've been having issues with cyber stalking, so I, uh, I decided to avoid that one. So, uh, like we were saying last year, uh, Chris took over the Android version. Chris Mays uh, has helped me out immensely on the iOS version. Um, he's like a full-time iOS developer. Uh, he's on the he's in the app. If you if you see his name, you know, click on him. Give him kudos as well because he's been a huge help in actually debugging and making sure that the app runs expectedly. It doesn't crash. Um, you know, a lot of good just kind of overall design patterns and things like that have come from his brain. Um, and I was hoping he was here so we could, you know, recognize him a little bit, but that's fine. But otherwise, right, just getting feedback from you has been the best thing, right? If you use the app and there's something that bugs you, like Chris said, let us know. Tell us about it. If you haven't downloaded the app, go download the app and use it. Make sure and update the events because it is being updated every, yeah, <laughs> pull, pull, to, pull down to update because that'll actually get you the latest results and the latest uh, events that are going on and what's going on right now. Um, but let us know if those are wrong, but also let us know if there's something in the app that, that is an issue, especially if the app crashes. Right? So we've got a whole bunch of lessons learned, right? Um, first of all, haters are gonna hate. Yeah, so some of you are mean, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> um, the first couple of years, or the first four years, um, at least for my end, was soloing this, which means like a lot of late nights staring at this. And then I would get on the reviews page and I'm like, holy shit. You people can be evil. I already know this because we're on Twitter. We've seen the worst of the internet, but um, uh, I think it definitely garnered some thick skin over the years. Um, so yeah, the three of us have poured a lot into this and we've realized you can't please everybody. So the best we can do is just try to make it as good as we can for all of you guys. But I will say it has been 
highly entertaining <laughs> reading some of the stuff that we've gotten over the last, what, six years? Yeah. I don't know what you got on your end. Oh, all the iOS developers, they're totally trustworthy and nice people. <laughs> Um, the other thing we've learned is that, like, taking feedback, right? Obviously, Twitter is a great way to do this. Yeah. Um, you can hit us up. That's why our handles are there in the applications. But aside from that, if you hit us up on GitHub, that's where we're actually tracking the code. Um, and you put in a you know pull request or you put in an issue, uh, we will track it in there and close it out, so you know that 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 we've looked at it and we've done something with it, right? Yep. Um, <laughs> we do have to wait. I, you have to wait. I have to wait. I have to wait. <laughs> like I said, there's a version that's out there that's hopefully going to be released soon. Um, I get denied on expedite requests. Um, I, I'm waiting on jailbreaks, whatever, right? Um, you know, the, the other thing that I was thinking is that we could push it to like Cydia, uh, the, you know, the jailbreak store. Um, is anybody here using a jailbroken device, even as a burner? Wow. So, I mean, if there's enough of you that are doing it, then I'll look into it and we'll push it that direction because it'd be a lot easier for me to, be, to push in there for Saric than it is to actually push into the App Store. I just am not sure if Apple's going to be too happy about that. You never know. Backup plans. You have to have backup plans, right? I think we've kind of learned that we don't have a solid backup plan yet. <laughs> um, so we've we've tried various different ways of scheduling, and this actually ties into what you've built over the last I don't know how long you've been working on the yeah. on your uh, event yeah. manager. So um, we've tried pulling from the info booth. We've tried static JSON. So we've tried, kind of tried to combine the two of those and have some like main dashboard for um, loading all of the events in because it's just gotten so big and so many villages and so many pieces of this that we've we've got so, to streamline it some more. Yeah. Guesses on how many events we have in the hacker in hacker tracker this year. All of them. <laughs> I wish, but I don't think we have Probably gotten not. there. How much did you, how many did you say? One okay, keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Close, just under 1,000. We're probably around 800 right now yeah. that you can actually do. And that's between parties, events, and all of the different talks, contests. Villages. Um, and yeah, especially the villages. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we're at 25 plus villages this year, and each village is basically its own conference, right? Some of those villages, the con like the content that is there, is bigger than the other conferences that we've been talking about. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to give you ways to actually filter things and actually, you know, do searches. That's what you're going to have to become familiar with to actually get that data pack, right? Okay, so going forward, first of all, we we want it to be more streamlined. The whole process from the feedback to you to actually us getting the features out. Um, the iOS Android parody to make sure that they look somewhat similar so the experience on both is the same. Now that is difficult based on the design patterns from Android or from Google versus the design patterns from Apple. Uh, but there's a lot of different apps that do this. We're gonna we're kind of creating our own look and feel, and we will be you know maintaining that parity to some extent, right? Um, you guys want to say anything else? The scheduling application, like Whitney said, we built a back end to Hacker Tracker, um, and if you can find it, insert an event. Uh, kudos to you, right? Um, that's uh, yeah. That would be a challenge, but most likely you won't be able to, f to figure out where it's at, so it's fine. Um, it's fine. Don't you worry about it. You just challenged remove hackers. I know I did. That was stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have been here for too long. That's, yeah. yeah, so the scheduling application is going to make this a lot easier. We are coordinating, like I said, with the info booth. Uh, next year I, we're probably going to take over info.defcon.org, right? Um, and so we're hoping that we'll be able to bring that into parity with what the app looks like. It uh, just depends on the time. If you are interested and have development skills and want to jump in and help us out, let us know. I, we're always looking for more people to help. I mean, how many hours did you spend inputting? Yeah, if anybody items? likes data entry, <laughs> <laughs> join us. Join us. <laughs> we need a mindless factotum. Who's, yes. who's out there? You can't leave until we find one. Come on. <laughs> Uh, more conferences. Like I said before, uh, if you're attending a conference and they don't have a scheduling application, 
let us know. We'd be happy to add that data to Hacker Tracker to the back end and actually push that out so it becomes more useful. Uh, realistically, we want this as the go to for not just DEF CON, but for the community, for the wider security community or uh, development community for that matter. I mean, how many people have used an app? Have, did you use the Black Hat app this year? How awesome was that? <laughs> Yes, that was great. Yeah, no, okay, all right. Well, that, that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> Feedback is always welcome. Do you want to? Oh. Right. Oh, did you want to say something? I don't know. Um, so, as always, uh, yeah, like Seth said, feedback is always welcome. Um, hit us up on GitHub, hit us up on Twitter if you want to contribute. Do so. It's all open source, it's all out there. Um, the three of us are responsive pretty much. All the, time. Yeah, so all, all the time. If you want to contribute, please do. We would love to have you and we would love the help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's open source, but please don't be too critical. We're on a time crunch. Things are messy. We'll fix it up later. Next year. Next will be better. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I, I, I think we only have a couple of minutes before the DEF CON 101 panel is coming in here. Okay. Yeah. Whenever um, you pull. Yeah, whenever on iOS, whenever you pull. On Android, there is a There's a pull. Should be seven days, oh, yeah. could be fifteen minutes. I don't know. Uh, it's <laughs> mainly about how Android hands work manager. I kinda specify seven days, but it'll kinda hopefully if you're on Wi Fi, it's like, oh I'll do it now or whatever, you know. Okay. So but you can also do it manually. Yes. So you can also turn We're we're throwing in updates like this whole week it's been pretty much hourly that we've been adding yeah. events. So just yeah, refresh. just swipe down. Just like when you go to that first event screen, just swipe down, let it refresh, because there's other stuff that's being added and those those dates change. And we're getting told that we, we need to leave the stage, so we got ten more questions before we'll leave. No, no, I wait, wait, no, no. I need the mindless fact totem first. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for using the application. Follow us on Twitter. Leave us feedback, and I hope it's useful. That was the whole reason that we built it, is we wanted something. So it works for us, but if it doesn't work for you, it's not, you know, it's not as cool. So, um, yeah, so download it, download, us, download it, and let us know what you think, okay? Like, comment, and subscribe.